We'll talk about that when we, we get to RF. So uh, I actually came up with the idea that, oh, there goes the shot glass. All right. Um, I actually put the, uh, the antenna back in here. The nice thing about these foam planes is that you can cut them up. So this plane splits in half. I'll show you in a couple pictures. And I mounted the antenna in the, uh, in the rear boom here, which keeps it nice and separated by the, from the video transmitter up here. It's kind of the best you can do. So when you do that, you get a little bit better range, but you really want to make sure that none of your RF systems conflict with each other. The video feed. Um, I guess I'm really not qualified to talk about this because my video sucked, but I'll show you some better ones. Maybe I can get some faith back. Board cameras are the way to go as far as, uh, as your actual camera setup. They're very inexpensive. The one I'm flying here is actually only $18 online. I probably could have spent twice as much, you know, forfeited a meal or something, but whatever, it worked. So. Uh, board cameras, the best place to get them I found is from supercircuits.com. You can find them anywhere from like $200 down to, I think their cheapest model is like $5 or $6. I don't think you'll get amazing quality out of that one, but usually in the $30 to $60 range, you can get really awesome uh, color board cameras that are very lightweight. Obviously, if you lose it, it's not really a big deal if it messes up. Um, transmitters is, a, is a, more of a, a problem with these, uh, with these setups. I really want to stress, you have to really have a ham radio license to do anything uh, in the RF bands legally. Um, the, uh, the regular you know, civilian bands that are opened up, if you don't have an FCC license, uh, kind of stink for video feeds because anybody and their you know, grandmother can have like a little security camera outside and it'd be transmitting wirelessly. And that's really going to mess up your video feed, especially when you go three miles over the hill and you know, you're checking out that X that you kind of never got over. So. <laughs> As one of my friends says, it's not stalking if you love them, so. <laughs> but um, 900 megahertz is, is probably the best uh, frequency range for this kind of setup if you just want to buy something off the shelf. Rangevideo.com has a $50 transmitter, and then you can buy like a $30 or $40 receiver if you just want a system that you plug and go. Uh, if you, and you need a ham radio license to operate that as well, unfortunately. But, if you want to roll your own system, I want to recommend the 434 megahertz or 1.25 gigahertz uh, ham radio um, uh, TV bands. These things are awesome, and you can probably push video, I'm going to guesstimate, well out over 10 miles. Uh, the ham radio guys usually send video in a couple hundred miles on a regular basis. You know, they'll, they'll do like a web chat or whatnot. Um, so if you can just find a way to miniaturize that equipment, which shouldn't be too difficult, keep it in the lightweight uh, package, then you can easily integrate this into your plane. But in the upper right, that is the, uh, the video setup I'm using. So you can see that the transmitter actually is only a little bit larger than a standard composite jack. So you get a feel for how small it is. And uh, the video camera on the upper left-hand corner, I kind of blew that picture up. I don't know if you can see it. This thing's tiny. It's, it's right here. I mean, this would easily fit in the palm of my hand. And I'm pretty happy with it. It survived a bunch of crashes. And again, at $20, it's disposable. GPS. So GPS obviously has rev revolutionized our, uh, our way of doing things. None of us can read a map anymore, which I, I guess is good. You don't have to carry that around. But for uh, UAV systems, this is a must-have system. You have got to have a GPS receiver because it's the best way to get positional data. So the systems, the, uh, the components that you want to look for are going to have a very high update rate or refresh rate, and obviously you want them to be accurate. The GPS... Uh, Component on the left there is a U-Box chipset mounted on a helix antenna. And this will give you a 4 or 5 hertz um, uh, refresh update rate. The one on the right is the one that the RD pilot system was originally based on. They've moved away from this because it only updated positional data about once a second. But these two, I think the one on the left uh, can receive up to 50 channels, the one on the right up to 20 channels. And ideally, you're looking at positional data from anywhere from half a meter if you're having a really good day to about two meters on average. So, you know, that's all you really need for uh, these UAV systems up in the air. Now, uh, the airframe. This is, this is the best part, I think, because you really get to pick whatever you want to put this guy in. I've seen model airplanes that look like, quite literally and on purpose, flying lawnmowers. Um, I don't know if you can actually modify these to, uh, you know, to wear, or to, uh, you know, fly autonomously because they're not going to have uh, capabilities you want. But you really can take most foam 
models and modify them uh, with this setup. Foam is the best. You don't want to go with that old balsa stuff wrapped in shrink wrap and everything because anytime you hit something, it's going to fall apart and you're going to you know, <laughs> be crying on your knees. So yesterday when we actually put this up, uh, we flew into a tree to land it. I, s <laughs> I swear that was intentional, okay? <laughs> Again, you know, the, all the ha cabbies kind of came out and they were staring at us and, you know, buzzed them real quick. The plane's coming in too low. We take it around again. Oh, there's a good tree. I'll just land it into that. So foam is the way to go because you can easily fix it. Gorilla glue, this is a secret, I, just between me and you. Gorilla glue, mix a little bit of water, it foams up. Now, this stuff is beautiful because if this plane snaps in half, I can have this ready to go the next day. In fact, I've done this on multiple occasions. The plane literally snaps in half because I did something stupid, like I, you know, stepped on it. And a uh, <laughs> little bit of Gorilla Glue later, yeah, there's a, you can see the little seam and you're like, wow, man, I, this thing looks like Frankenstein right now, but it flies. So, uh, also, foam's really easy to work with. Obviously, you can, you know, just cut it out pretty simply. And uh, you can tape it together. So the best thing about this plane right here is if you, if you guys actually come up late, uh, afterwards, I can show you. The entire thing's held together with scotch tape, I swear. There's, there's not an ounce of, uh, there's no bolt, there's no, tape, or, uh, no glue, and the whole thing's just scotch taped together. And then I use a little bit of packing tape along the leading edges and to keep the wings snapped in. Works beautifully because, you know, I'm a prototyper, so as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to tear it apart and try a new payload, try a new setup. Tape's the easiest way to go. You just cut it and, uh, and pull it off next. So the airframe of choice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Multiplex Easy Star. This is the plane that you want to have, or at least the uh, kind of the genre of, of plane you want to have if you're going to uh, roll your own system. Uh, essentially, what you have is a pusher motor setup. So we keep the prop you know, uh, to the rear and high of the wings, so we don't have to worry about how this thing's going to land. We don't have to worry about the extra weight of landing gear because it's just going to slide on the ground or smack into the side of a building for recovery. <laughs> Very effective method, I might add. And remember, foam doesn't really break easily. So as long as your electronics are cushioned, that actually is a recovery technique. I have demonstrated this. The plane is perfectly, I mean, it's perfectly recoverable. It kind of, yeah, it gets a little smushed up front, but ah, whatever. Um, so anyways, this is a really nice system because you'll also notice how the wings are kind of bowed up at the tips. This gives it some uh, stability um, without, you know, having to use any electronics in the first place. So it'll, it natively wants to kind of keep wings level. It doesn't fly upside down whatsoever. I, I tried that. <laughs> it, but yeah, it, it crashed. So um, anyways, and the best part is that it has a huge payload area. Where you see that black canopy right there, you can just pull that off and throw as much electronics and batteries in it as you want. This, um, also, because of the, uh, the airfoil, you can really pack a lot of weight on as well. I think my model weighs something like two or three times as much as the kit you know, is supposed to weigh, and it works fine. I've, I've packed actually about two pounds of payload in this thing and somehow made it fly. So there you go. This is the... Uh, this is what it looks like when you pull it out of the box. Um, it's not going to have anything installed, and it splits right down the middle, which makes it really easy to, uh, you know, kind of mount your, your components. And uh, so the first thing that I do is install the, uh, the propulsion system. Motors are kind of a big deal with these because obviously it's your, your only way of getting them up in the air, and you're, you're not really going to use a... Um, some type of nitro-based or you know, gas-based model airplane engine because they're just kind of big and I want mine to be quiet. I want this thing overhead at 200 feet and you're not even going to know it's there because <laughs> you can't hear it. And you can't see it when it's white and it's up against you know, the, the clouds and everything. So anyways, the, uh, the stock motor that comes with it is actually pretty weak. It, it's more than enough for the plane when you're just playing with it, but when we're carrying all these extra batteries and all this extra payload, we want something a little, a little stronger. So in model airplane, you know, uh, circles, the best way to go when you want to upgrade any type of uh, electric motor system is to go with a brushless system. This is what I have here. If you go to the DIY Drones uh, they've, uh, website, they've gone out there and they've tried all the different motor setups and they have concluded that, <laughs> as market currently states, this is the, the best one for this uh, airframe. That's a $50 brushless motor that'll turn at uh, several thousand RPM and will take your finger off if you're not careful. We're using a uh, PVC prop and uh, I have an, a, uh, an ESC 